and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys where we have disappointment yet again here coming back from a break looking to kick on looking to start in the best way possible and we've fallen down dropping points in the local derby against Espanyol Marcos Alonso put us ahead in the first half but it was a late penalty and late drama because once again it was the Mattia Lajos clown show. That's what we saw late in the second half and we're going to be talking all about this game. Did Barca deserve to win it? It's coming up. So come on, let's do it. Because indeed, coming into this weekend, the big surprise just on the eve of the game is that Robert Lewandowski was in the end allowed to play and Xavi even admitted before this game that he'd been planning all week for Lewandowski not to be involved. But he did start the game. His suspension there has been effectively postponed. It hasn't been removed. It's just been postponed there pending an appeal decision. And we'll find out now after this match when we're going to be missing Lewandowski and how long for. But I did think, to be honest, guys, it was a bit of a surprising lineup from Xavi here. I think what we saw in terms of the defence, that was a real surprise to me there. Araujo on the bench was understandable, but Kunde there as well. He, of course, only returned turn very recently to training after the World Cup, but no battle day at left back. It was Alba, Alonso, Christensen and Roberto along the back line there from Xavi. The midfield though, looked as we wanted it to. It was Frankie in the middle, Gavi and Pedri alongside him. And then an attack as well. Interesting choices there too. Dembele was indeed on the bench and Sufati got a big start from the left hand side. But unfortunately, it didn't really work out. Because you have to say, there was a fantastic crowd inside of the stadium today. You can't fault them at all. 88,000 fans inside of the camp now. Lewandowski presenting there his golden boot and Gavi his golden boy award before kickoff. And there was a very special moment there when the camp now stood to pay its respect to Pele, who sadly passed away this week. A lot of love for him inside the stadium today for the incredible impact, of course, that he had on everybody within the game of football and it didn't take to be fair Barca long to get themselves underway again you know we started the game pretty well Marcos Alonso there opening the scoring pretty soon in the game seven minutes gone Lewandowski was in the thick of it it was awful defending from Espanyol there from a corner they missed header after header it's actually Christensen who sets up Alonso really good header there back across goal it's brave from Alonso to go in there with his head but he gets there first and Barca like I say were off and running looking good but then it was about, can we build on that? Can we add to that lead there? Finish off Espanyol. And it could have been 2-0. And Marcos Alonso could have actually had two goals here. Alba it was who put a ball into the area right in front of goal. Alonso, I thought it was going to be 2-0, but he missed that one there. And in his time at Chelsea, he did actually chip in with several goals. There's certainly something we want to see more from him, but we couldn't add to that lead. And I think that's, again, the theme, you know, of the whole game here. And look at especially at that first staff whereby we didn't create an abundance of chances but you felt like we could have put Espanyol away they didn't really threaten us right this whole game they didn't really have a lot of chances or even any time really in our own half but we didn't kill the game off we didn't put this game to bed and when you leave it at 1-0 you leave yourselves open you leave the game just there for the opposition to come back into it and then in the second half then we did start to see things change slowly but surely first of all there was a change in personnel because Gaffey had to go off there at the start of the second half because even in the first half there he seemed to be suffering with a bit of back pain he had some spray there applied to his back and he was involved in quite a few battles he tried to play through it but obviously there he could not continue Busquets came on in his place and that then saw a bit of a reshuffle in midfield Frankie then went to the interior position on the left side and he actually made a terrific run as soon as he was moved into that role he made a great run forward forcing one of the many yellow cards we saw from Espanyol and it was on the hour mark then of the game that Xavi decided to change a lot of things indeed because Ansu Fati was replaced and I've got to say today guys he didn't take advantage of the chance that he had in the team you felt as though it was a big opportunity for him first game back heading into the new year Xavi picking him ahead of Ferran ahead of Memphis Depay but Ansu just didn't really take advantage he didn't really have 
any significant moments, any good opportunities there, really not having the kind of impact that we were hoping for. I think Rafinha, who also went off on 60 minutes, he was brighter for me. He was one of the players that, especially in the first half, he looked more likely to score than probably most other players. He had shots on goal there, trying to work the goalkeeper, and he was at least making something happen, but he was also withdrawn on the hour mark. And Usman Dembele and Ferran Torres there coming on in their places. Dembele playing off to the right-hand side, Ferran to the left. But I've got to say today, guys, I don't really feel as though any of the wingers out there caused Espanyol in a threat. We need more from our wingers. Every single one of them are capable of more, and we didn't see that again today. But then the chaos did indeed begin in this game. It was sort of inside the last 20 minutes of this one, the penalty that arrived at Espanyol's door, courtesy, unfortunately, of Marcos Alonso. He may have scored down the other end, but here he's looking up at the ball. He does trip accidentally. I really think it is accidental, but he does make clear contact with Hossolu's foot. He goes down theatrically, of course. Espanyol get the penalty. Lajos couldn't wait to give it, and it slotted down the middle nice and calmly. Espanyol were level, but there was still plenty of time to go in the game. We could have regrouped. We could have got ourselves set. But the problem is, the game from that moment on... It was just chaos. It was carnage. It wasn't football. What we saw there in that final stage of the game, that is nothing to do with football. That is arguing there. It's petty. It's between the referee and the players there. And usually, you want your referee to take charge of the situation. You want your referee to assert there some control over the players. Lajas doesn't have that. Now, what he tries to do is hide behind his cards. He thinks by giving away many, many yellow cards and red cards here that he can control the players. But Mattia, you still are not in control of the game. We saw it at the World Cup. He was an absolute disaster at that tournament. And I ask you now, guys, why then, on the back of that World Cup performance, would you say, OK, the next game, he can referee the derby? What on earth were the Federation doing there, giving him this game today? It's a disgrace. We saw him again handing out card after card. There was a red card for Jordi Alba for protesting. Straight red there. There was two red then in quick succession for Espanyol. One of those ended up somehow getting overturned, but it's just a nightmare. You can't play football in this kind of environment here. All that time that was wasted, we then got nine minutes added on. Was that even enough? But it just doesn't make sense to me how this man consistently gets the biggest of games when he cannot. He cannot referee football matches. He cannot control players. He's a nightmare, but... We still had chances, and as much as I do not like Mattia Lajos, as much as I want to look at him and say, oh, you're the reason that we dropped points today, we still should have taken it into our own hands, put the game to bed earlier on. Then chances after all of this happened, Christensen was denied. Robert Lewandowski had big, big chances to get the winning goal, but it didn't arrive. And even late on there, Chaffee bringing on Balde, bringing on Kunde, replacing Frankie in midfield there, leaving Busquets and Pedri as the two midfielders. But we couldn't win it. And it was simply about today dropping points with a substandard performance. We weren't quite there after this long, long break. And ultimately, we've suffered now as a result. Because when you're looking at the table, yes, we still stand top of the league. But we're level on points with Real Madrid. There is nothing in it now. We're only there on goal difference right now. And of course, at the end of the season, goal difference won't even come into it. It will be decided on the head-to-head -head record. So right now, we are right there alongside Real. And we've blown our lead already. Ready, the first game back and we've fallen at the first hurdle. This is not what we wanted. This is not what we expected from this team. And we have to see more. We are tired of sitting here now week after week after week saying we've got the players. We've got the quality. We expect and demand more because we do. We should be doing better than this. We should have taken care of Espanyol today. We haven't done. And now the pressure again is on the team to respond. The pressure again is on Chaffee to respond. And all that I can say right now, guys, and I think you'll all certainly join me on this one. I hope for a long, long long time, we do not see the face of Mattia Lajos refereeing our games. So please guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you make of the game today? What did you think of the performance from Barca individual players and indeed from Xavi and that display from the referee today? What did you make of all that? All of that nonsense towards the end of the game. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Obviously not the ideal way to bounce back here into club football, but there are plenty of games right throughout January where we're going to have lots of opportunities and where we have to see, we must see more from this team. 
I will see you soon, guys. I'm wishing you all, of course, a happy, happy new year. Enjoy the celebrations tonight, and let's see what 2023 holds for all of us and for Barca. Thanks for your incredible support, for always tuning in, and for being there right throughout the year. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Barca. Oh.